What's that word, family? Hey, man, check this out. Today, I'm going to come to you guys with a story. And y'all might think that it's about boxing, but it has nothing to do with boxing. Something to do more with being financially stable. Now, we all just seen Evander Holyfield, championship boxer at the age of 58, the tender age of 58 years old was just knocked out by a UFC fighter that goes by the name of Vita Belfort. Now, that's nothing new. Boxers get knocked out all the time, but when it comes down to championship boxers like Evander Holyfield being knocked out in the first minute, it, it, it takes us someplace else. First of all, you want to say, why is a 58-year-old man jumping into a boxing ring? He wasn't meant to be the boxer to fight this guy, man. It was actually going to be Oscar De La Hoya, but he was found with a banned substance in his system, so he was unable to box this guy. So in a quick change, they threw Evander Holyfield in there because Evander Holyfield has been trying to box his rival, which is Mike Tyson. Well, Mike Tyson said, you know what, uh, I'll pass on that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he don't want to keep living his life with Evander Holyfield. The whole biting of the ear, him and Evander having two fights. I feel like Mike Tyson just got tired of it. Mike Tyson said, I'm not about to do that. I'm about to do something else. I'm, when people say I should go this way, just because y'all want it to be a left turn doesn't mean that I have to make a left turn. I'm gonna make a right turn. Mike Tyson got in the ring with Roy Jones Jr. and they lasted the whole fight, both of them. And Vander Holyfield getting in the ring with this guy, Vita Belfort, and he kicks his ass in the first round, man. I'm talking about it was very embarrassing for those that grew up with Evander Holyfield. We thought that he was still strong. He still looked good. He still looked healthy. It all comes down to this. Evander Holyfield did not have to be in the ring with this guy, man. The only reason he's in the ring with this guy is because he mismanaged money. You know what I'm saying? He let people steal from him. And that's what we got to watch out for. It's being black folks that can come into money. We got to watch our backs when it comes down to managing money. Now, Evander Holyfield did have several investments, but those investments did not work. So not only do you got people stealing money from you, you yourself personally is making wrong business decisions. Making the wrong business decisions. Now, we all know about the mansion that Rick Ross brought that happened to be once owned by Evander Holyfield. Well, it's a 54,000 square foot mansion that came along with 235 acres. It's the largest single family home in Atlanta, Georgia, or in Georgia, the state. And I do believe Rick Ross paid about uh, $5 million, or so it cost Evander Holyfield $10 million, something like that. But of course, he got the estate on a discount. Evander Holyfield did not know how to manage money. This guy has 11 kids and has been through three different divorces. 11 kids, three different divorces. Imagine the child support that Evander has to pay. The last time that we caught up with Evander Holyfield, he was living in a two bedroom apartment. So this fight really meant something to him. He needed this fight, but he chose the wrong person to go against and the refs had to stop the fight because it was a dangerous situation for Evander. Now me, myself, personally, I look at it like this. Evander Holyfield made over 230 million in his life while he was in his prime for boxing. Some people say that he made $100 million just to fight Tyson. I believe that. But at the same time, what I'm telling you guys is, if you don't manage your money the right way, you will fall. Evander's neighbors were also black. You got the biggest single family home in Georgia. You got black neighbors. So that means that black people are investing their money in the right ways. Evander Holyfield was just a person that did not know how to invest his money in the right way. Evander had his last fight back in 2011 when he was in his prime. He won by TKO. He was at the end of his prime, rather should I say. He was not at his prime because he was in his prime in the 90s. And we all know that famously Rick Ross 
brought the Evander Holyfield estate back in 2014. Now, Rick Ross was smart with the estate because he didn't want to have it just as a home. He actually used it as a movie studio. And if you have a movie and you have the right amount of money, you can actually rent the mansion from Rick Ross. And you could be able to film a movie in the Holyfield estate, or as Rick Ross calls it, the Rose estate or whatever the hell. Yeah. We see a stark difference in between these two individuals that I'm talking about. Now, one person, he had failed investments. And the other person, he had great investments. Rick Ross has great investments with Rose Champagne. He has great investments with, with the mansion that he brought from Holyfield, using it as a movie studio. He also has other investments such as Wingstop and et cetera. You can't give everybody your money, no matter who they are to. Family members, mothers, fathers, you can't just pass them out money. If they're not managing their money right, something else has to be done. Now, to blow through $230 million is just sad. You know, to have to fight somebody at the age of 58, and it's not the person that you want to fight, it's the person that they pick for you. It's just sad. I want to know how you guys feel about Evander Holyfield's knockout. First round, flat on his ass. It was a damn shame to me, so I'm pretty sure... It's a damn shame to him. Tell me how y'all feel about this whole entire debacle in the comment section. I'll be back later with more news and more commentary. Peace.